Hey guys, and welcome to Faith Works Designs. I'm Faith, and today we are finally, finally doing the taco wallet. I know, you guys have been asking for forever and a day. <laughs> this is coming out as a sew along with K&A Custom Fabrics. It will have all the pieces that you need to make the wallet all in one kit, which makes it really nice. You are going to have to buy the zipper tape separately and the zipper pull. Up. It's up to you. When you see the zipper pull, you're going to have to buy the zipper pull because it's so cute. <laughs> Let's take a look at our taco wallet. So we've got just our little flap so that it's like our taco folded over. And then the back is plain. If you wanted to, you could put a zipper in the back. It's up to you. Uh, we have a little magnetic snap here. When you open her up, she has a load and <laughs> a load of card slots. My customers have been asking and asking for card slots. So we did it. Um, there are card slots in our meat section. We also have an ID section. That was something new that I added so that you could have your ID where you can get to it pretty quickly. That was another uh, request that my customers had had. They wanted to be able to have their ID where they could easily reach it. And as soon as you open up the wallet, it's right there. Um, on the very back, there are more meat card slots. In the middle, this is something you guys don't have to do, but I feel like there's so much like wibbly wobbly going on that it needed it. Um, I put some snaps in between the zipper pocket and the next set of card slots. So you have card slots on this side, and when you flip it over, you've got card slots on that side. It is a total of 20 card slots. If that's not enough card slot holders, <laughs> my customers are always like, Faith, I need more card slots. And I'm just like, oh. <laughs> There's only so much you can fit into a wallet without it being, like, huge. So we fit in 20 in this wallet. Hopefully that's enough. Behind the ID wallet, there is a zipper pocket, and this is what I was talking about. You guys are going to love the zipper pull. It says extra spicy, <laughs> which I feel like I am some of the times. So you've got your zipper pocket here, and then you're going to snap it together with your card slots. And it's up to you if that's something that you want to do or not. You don't have to put the snaps in. Um, it's just something I felt like it needed with there being so much that when you kind of opened it up it kind of all flipped all over the place so it's up to you whatever you want to do so let's get started all right so first things first I find it the easiest to just do card slots and kind of get them out of the way so that it's just kind of it's just easier so we're gonna start with the card slots and I am double checking to make sure you can see all of it all right we're going to do a bunch of measurements. I will put them on the screen. Again, they will be in the written directions. Um, I'm going to start on the right and work my way to the left because I'm left-handed and that's what I do. <laughs> so we're going to start out. Our first mark is going to be four and a half. Then we're going to pick up our ruler and we're going to put our ruler at a three right here so I'm gonna put my three line right on the line that we just drew so essentially you're gonna be measuring three inches up from that line I, I'm gonna be able to word today I promise I'm gonna try really hard all right next measurement we're gonna go three and a half up then we're gonna go three inches up three and a half three so we're just going back and forth between three and three and a half so you've got three three and a half three three and a half three we're going we're going up three and a half And then three. Now we're going to be folding our card slots up. I'm going to do one at a time now that I've got both of them marked. Very first thing we're going to do is we're going to flip our fabric over. What I'm going to do is I'm going to find my very first line and I'm going to put right side to right side just like that. I'm going to take my my card slots and move them on that side. I'm going to find my second line. I'm going to put my ruler 
on that line. So your line is on this side, your ruler is right beside it. We're going to take the tail end of our card slots, put them to the other side. My ruler moved a little bit, so I'm going to go back and fix it. While you're making your card slots go back and forth and back and forth, you need to make sure that this side and this side are straight. That'll make sure that these card slots will stay straight for you. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to find the next line. So I've got the line that I folded at. I've got my next line right here. I'm going to fold my card slots at that line. And then you can finger press it. Slip your ruler out, put it on your next line, then take your um, card slot panel, fold it over, finger press, making sure that this side and this side is straight. Then we're going to fold it over, find the next line, put it down like that. And then we're going to find the next line. Take your ruler out, put your ruler on the next line, fold it over. Finger press. Pull it back, find your card slot line, finger press it down, take your ruler out very carefully, put it on your very last line like so and take your ruler out what I'm going to do is I'm going to clip on both sides really good so this doesn't shift too much and then what we're going to do is we're going to take it to the sewing machine and I'm going to top stitch each row just so that it lays like it's supposed to so I'm going to take this top part fold it back top stitch take this part fold it back top stitch the next. You're going to have to move your clips around as you get further down and you're folding layers back out of the way so that you can top stitch. You're just going to have to move your clips. Um, what you want to do when we're done is we're going to measure it and make sure that it's seven and a half inches. By the time we get done, it should measure seven and a half inches and we're good. So this is what our card slots are going to look like when we get done. You're going to top stitch all of the layers, each one at a time. Then we're going to take it to our cutting mat and make sure that it's seven and a half inches tall and then sew down the sides. I'm going to base stitch and make sure that they stay seven and a half inches tall. What I'm going to do is I've got my stitch link at a three. I'm going to top stitch each row. And you need to take this top layer right here, fold it back, and then start sewing an eighth of an inch from the top. And I'm just doing one or two back stitches. And then to kind of save on thread, um, and just kind of make to make it an assembly line, I'm just putting, I'm doing the meat and the salsa at the same time. So you can take this flap, move it back. went ahead off camera and went ahead and finished all four of my card slots. So I'm just going to do an assembly line until I get all of the card slots top stitched. Once they're all top stitched, then we can make sure that they measure seven and a half. And then we can base stitch them all together. So. I'm going to fast forward real quick while you guys can watch me um, top stitch all of my layers. I'm just going to take this next row and fold it back and you're going to do that with every row. Alright, so I've got all of my layers top stitched. The next thing we're going to do is we're going to base stitch down each side so that our card slots will stay at that seven and a half inch uh, measurement. I took all of my card slots back to the table because sometimes when you're top stitching they can kind of 
shift and move around. So I've laid it out on my table, made sure that it measured seven and a half, and now I'm gonna sew down the sides. All right, we have got our salsa card slots done. We have got our meat card slots done. Next thing that we're gonna do is you need to grab your two one and a half by seven and a half side pieces. You'll have two meat and you'll have four salsa. What you're gonna do is you're going to put um, each piece of meat onto one side. So you'll put your, lay your card slots out. You'll put one on this side and then you'll take this one and put it on that side. We're going to sew them at a quarter of an inch so that they have their side flaps. Then you're going to do the same thing to the salsa. I'm going to do one side at a time, but you will have this salsa on this side, this salsa on that side. So I'm going to do my outside panels first, and then I'll come back and get the other sides after I do that. So I'm going to go to the sewing machine. I'm going to sew a quarter of an inch on this side, a quarter of an inch on this side, attach them, take these two, a quarter of an inch on that side, a quarter of an inch on that side, and attach those. Then I'll come back and deal with these. All right, so I've still got a three stitch length. And I'm just going to go a quarter of an inch. I'm going to do all four of my card slots all at one time, back to back to back. All right, so we've got that attached. I'm gonna open these up, and then I'm just going to top stitch down them. I have my stitch length at a four. So we've got our side pieces on our meat. Those we're gonna set aside for a minute. Then we're gonna grab our salsa, and we're gonna do the same thing. We're gonna add these sides onto the sides of our card slots. We're gonna take them back to the sewing machine, sew it a quarter of an inch just like we did on the other side, and then top stitch just like we did on the other side. All right, we're gonna take our meat card slots and then your meat side panels. They should measure four and three quarters wide by the seven and a half tall. On the side where you haven't put your side piece, on that side, we're gonna put right side to right side and we're gonna sew these together. So on this side, sew a quarter of an inch and sew these together. All right, I've got my stitch length at a three. And we're just gonna be a quarter. Now that you've got these sewn together, you're gonna pull back this panel and meet it up with the outer edge. The outer edge is going to be raw. We're not messing with that. If you wanted to, you could make a couple of clips just to make sure that those ends meet up and then just kind of press it down. Now, we are going to stitch in the ditch, but we're gonna try and get as close as we can to our seam. Hopefully you can see it, our seam right here. You're not gonna wanna be sewing over this way a little bit. You're gonna be wanting to stitch right where that seam is. And I've got a four stitch length now, if I haven't said it already. All right, so we have got our meat card slots and backing put on. Next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna grab our lettuce. Now they are seven and a half inches wide by eight and a half inches long. What you're gonna do is you're going to want to fold this so that the eight and a half inches is getting folded in half. It should be seven and a half inches tall with it folded. This gives us our slip pocket behind our card slots. What I'm gonna do is, and you don't have to do this, if you wanted to, you could take it to your ironing board and then just iron this down and then go to the next step, or you can top stitch it, it's up to you. I am gonna go ahead, fold them in half, and take them to my sewing machine, and with a four stitch length, top stitch them on the side that I've made my little fold. All right, so we have got our lettuce all top stitched. I grabbed my tortilla shell, 
and then I grabbed my meat card slots. What I'm going to do is with the side that's folded over that we top stitched, it's going to go on one side and then we're going to grab the meat that has our opening over here, our top stitching over there. They're going to go on top of each other like that so that all the raw edges are on the outside right here. Then I'm going to grab my other thing of lettuce and I'm going to put it with the raw edges facing that way and line it up with my tortilla shell. And then the same thing with the card slots. I'm going to make sure that all the raw edges are pointing out and not in. I'm going to take this to the sewing machine real quick and I am going to base stitch my card slots in place got my four stitch length and then just right where the card slots are and the um, slip pockets are we're just going to go all the way around at an eighth of an inch just kind of base stitching them in place all right we've got this panel all done so our card slots are on here we've got our slip pockets everything's good let's put this aside for just a second then I'm going to grab a piece of clear vinyl that is two inches tall by four inches wide. I'm also going to grab the two side pieces that are two inches wide by four inches long. I took it to my ironing board and I folded it in half like that and then I folded it in half again. We're going to be making like a bias tape for our clear panel. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to slip the clear piece along the edge and put my little like cheese binding on there. Then I'm going to go on the other side and do the same exact thing. Slide it in there so that it's between the fabric. We're going to go to the sewing machine and we're going to sew an eighth of an inch away from the inside edge. So right here and then right along here. I've got my stitch length at a four. And then just an eighth of an inch from the edge, or you can use your foot as a guide. We're just wanting to sew the um, binding on. Alright, now we're going to grab the piece that is four and an eighth wide by four and three quarters tall. We're going to lay it down on our desk, and you're going to measure one inch down and place your clear ID pouch. Now it's going your clear ID pouch is going to be slightly short and that's okay. It's going to get caught in our seam allowance, but you want to make sure that the ID is one inch down. Now we're going to go to the sewing machine. What I'm going to do is with a four stitch length, I'm going to start on this side, go down, over, and back up. We're not going to stitch at the top. That's how we get our ID in there. So let's go do that. All right, so we're just going around the edge. I've got a four stitch length. All right, we've got that all stitched in place. You can try your ID out, make sure it fits. It should. The next thing that we're going to do is we're going to grab our two and an inch quarter wide by four and three quarters pieces. We're going to right sides together, stitch them a quarter of an inch on each side and we're attaching these as side pieces. So we're gonna, you can do one side and the other, but I'm gonna go ahead and do both while we're at the sewing machine and just sew down both sides. All right, I've got my three stitch length. I'm gonna go down the side. All right, we've got our sides attached. The next thing I'm gonna do is push these open. You do want to give it a little tug and then top stitch. I would not press this as there is clear vinyl right there. <laughs> so you're kind of going to have to do it with your hands. Just press it out. I'm going to give it a little tug. We have got our panel all together. Now we're going to grab our zipper, our two zipper tabs, and our zipper. I went ahead and took my zipper tabs and I folded them in on themselves like that. 
and then fold them in again so that you have like a bias tape. I'm going to put my zipper on my zipper tape. Your zipper is six inches. Left side first, then your right side, and then push down. You can already see I didn't do that right. I guess I could show you. Okay, if your zipper tape matches up straight across here, then you've done it right. I'm just going to put my zipper in the middle. Then I'm going to take both of my zipper tabs and add them onto each side of my zipper. So we're just going to sew down with a three. I like to back stitch when I start and back stitch when I stop, and then we'll cut the excess uh, zipper tab off. All right, so we're going to take one of our zipper tabs and we're going to slide it on the end of our zipper. <laughs> Then I'm going to take the other end of my zipper tab, making sure that your zipper is out of the way. Alright, then I'm going to take the excess of the zipper tape off, or the zipper tab off, sorry. Don't cut your zipper tape. I'm just taking the zipper tab excess off and then your zipper is all prepped to start our zipper pocket. I've got my zipper ready to go. I went ahead and grabbed the ID pocket. So with the open side up, I'm going to put my zipper tape with my zipper closing to the left, opening to the right if you wanted to. You can make a center snip in your zipper and a center zip in your ID pocket piece, but I am going to eyeball it as usual. Then I'm going to clip it together and I'm just going to go ahead and base stitch the two together before we do anything else. <laughs> Alright, now that my zipper's base stitched on, I'm going to take the four by seven and a half inch cheese strip <laughs> and I'm going to do right sides to right sides. And we're going to sew these together with a three stitch length with a quarter of an inch seam allowance. And then I'm going to take my lining and I'm going to pull it back and my top panel away from my zipper and then with a four stitch length we're going to um, sew straight down it. Now I have got that top stitch and it will look like this because we need that out of the way you'll find out later. We'll close that up later. Um, next thing that we're going to do is we're going to grab the piece that is four and three quarters by seven and a half. We're going to put right side to right side of the outside of our zipper wallet compartment. And I'm going to go ahead and base stitch this one in place as well so I don't have to worry about it moving. Now that the zipper is um, base stitched to that one, we're going to take our other four inch by seven and a half inch piece. We're going to lay it right side to right side of our zipper and then with a quarter of an inch seam allowance we'll sew that down. <laughs> Alright, now we're going to take our outside and our lining piece. So just like this, we're going to pull both outers and, and lining away from the zipper and then we're going to, with a four stitch length, we're going to top stitch. Alright, so we've got our outside panels ready to go. we got our lining ready to go. We're not closing this up how you think we're going to close it up, so hold your horses. Uh, next thing we're going to do is we're going to grab our salsa card slots. You want your salsa card slots to face the same direction your zipper is closing to the left that way. We want our card slots to slide in 
to the left. It'll make sense when it's all done. <laughs> so what you're going to do, we're taking our salsa card slots and adding them to our outside panels. We are not attaching them to this lining right here. So when I flip this over and put them together, I'm just clipping that outside panel, not this lining yet. We're not messing with that yet. We're just clipping them to that outside cheese panel. We're going to take this side and fold it over. What we're going to do is we're going to be sewing down both sides to sew the card slots to the outer panel at a quarter of an inch. So we're going to sew on both these sides and that way all of this will all be attached and I'll show you how we'll close it up in a minute. I've got my stitch length at a three. I'm just going to go down the side. Your lining should not even be in the way to be an issue. And now I'm going to do the other side. Alright, so we're sewed together. What I'm going to do next is I'm going to open my zipper up all the way. Now I took um, I took my panels to my ironing board and what I did was I ironed one side the seam going in one direction and on the other side the seam going in the opposite direction so that when this closes up the seams are not falling on top of each other. Um, so they're kind of going to uh, butterfly seam. Um, with the zipper open, what we're going to do is we're going to take these ends with our salsa. We're going to put them together just like that. And now, just as you would any other zipper pocket, we're going to sew all the way around leaving a hole open in the lining of our um, zipper pocket lining. So you see how these seams are butterflied and they're going two different directions. So my card slot, this side was facing this way, the other side was facing that way. It's not like a major thing, but it will help um, when going to sew it later. And now. So I'm just going to clip all the way around. What we're going to do is we're going to start on one side, leaving ourselves a hole to turn all of this inside out through. We're going to start here, go down, around, down, back up, and then back over here. Just making sure that you leave yourself enough room to turn all of this inside out. All right, so I've got my three stitch length. I'm going to give myself a decent sized hole to turn this inside out with because it is a lot. Make sure that when you're stitching your zipper, um, all of that is supposed to push down into your lining, not be up here. So this right here, your little zipper tape, needs to be pushed towards the lining not the outside of the bag or the zipper pocket. Alright, so we're all sewn around. I also went ahead and I snipped all of the corners so that when I turn everything inside out, the corners will lay nice and flat. So now what we're going to do is we're going to open that zipper all the way up and we're going to push all those card slots and everything through our hole. Before you go any further, make sure that your corners are out right here. We don't want those sticking out. If you wanted to, you could go ahead and press this so that it'll lay nice and flat. It's up to you. I'm not going to do that because I think it's going to be fine. Um, the last thing you're going to want to do is you're going to want to get that lining out and then go ahead and then close that up just like you would any other um, lining in a zipper pocket. I am just going to fold in the edges a quarter of an inch, take this to the uh, sewing machine, and in an eighth of an inch just sew that close. My stitch length is a three. I'm just going to go an eighth of an inch in and close this up. Once you have cut all of your threads, you can go ahead and you can put your 
um, lining back into your zipper pouch. And then your zipper pouch card slots are all finished. All right, now that our zipper pocket is all done up, the next thing we need to do is set that aside. Grab your main tortilla shell panel and your lining flap. What we're going to have to do is we're going to find where we're going to put our magnetic snaps. Uh, you're going to need the male and female end, and I also use Peltex behind mine. I also cut them to the size of the washer and made the marks and opened those up with my seam ripper. You don't want the Peltex much larger than the actual um, washer because it will kind of show through on that cotton fabric. So what we're going to do is we're going to grab the lining for the flap and we need to find the center. And then we're going to measure one inch up on the center. I'm going to take my washer and place it on that spot. And then I am going to find my seam ripper. I'm going to open that up. I'm going to put the female end on my flap. They tend to close better when I have this magnet on that side. All right, then I'm going to put my Peltex on top of that. Then I'm going to put my washer on top of that. And then I'm going to push those down. So your flap is all prepped. Then we need our main body of our outside panel. We need to find the center and I'm going to take my pen because I don't want to um, press this vinyl but I'm going to take my pencil and just kind of make a mark where the center is so I can find it. And then you're going to measure up two and a quarter. So I've got my ruler centered on my middle mark I've got it moved down to two and a quarter. I'm going to grab my washer. Mark those sides. Take my seam ripper. Open that up. Put my male end in the front on the right side like that. Add my Peltex and then my washer and then push the sides down like that. So our magnets are all prepped and ready to go. The next thing we need to do is grab our outer flap. We're going to be putting our outer flap to our lining flap right side to right side. We're going to sew those together leaving this end right here open we need to be able to turn that inside out so let's go do that all right i have got my stitch length to a three i also have a size 12 needle in there um, and i'm going to be going around a quarter of an inch making sure to leave that top open i've sewn around this twice i'm going to turn this inside out it's just the flap that's going to be pulled on, so I'll go ahead and sew twice just to make sure that that flap is sewn good to my lining. And then you're going to make sure that you get all of your edges poked out. Next thing I'm going to do with a four stitch length is I'm going to go all the way around, even this top part that's open. I'm going to go around that part now and close it up. All right, I thought I was recording and I was not. Okay, <laughs> our panel for our flap is all done. Need to grab your meat panel, fold it in half, press it with your fingers so that you can find the center. Then I took my ruler and I measured out a four inch hole and marked it with my pencil. Then I took my seam ripper and went all the way down now what we're going to do, now that we're recording, <laughs> I'm going to take the main outer panel and put it right side to right side. Right now it does not matter which side is going to what, but we're going to put it right side to right side. I am going to clip them together. 
Once you've got everything clipped together, you're going to sew around three sides. We're going to leave one of our sides open for our flap, and that is going to be the side that does not have the magnetic snap. So you're going to sew around here, leaving this hole open. Make sure that when you're leaving the hole open, it's the side that does not have the magnetic snap. All right, so we're going to start here. I'm going to start and then back stitch. All right, so we've got our three sides sewn. We've got this open. Next thing we need to do is get our flap. Our flap needs to be right side of the vinyl to the right side of the vinyl on the inside. So we're going to open this up, vinyl to vinyl, and then just kind of push her in there, flatten it out. Let's clip it together, and then we'll go back to the sewing machine and um, sew our flap in. We did that separately because it's really hard to get around this corner. What I normally do is just sew straight across and it's a whole lot easier than trying to break a needle going around that corner. So we're going to go to the sewing machine and just sew straight across here. So I've got my stitch length still at a three. I'm just going to go straight across. All right, we've got it all sewn up now. The next thing we're going to do is you can cut the corners here so that it'll lay a little bit flatter when you turn it inside out. When you turn it inside out, try really hard not to rip your material. So you're going to have to really take your time. I like getting these corners out first. Just take your time and your fabric will not rip any more than it will. Um, if you wanted to, you can make a little bit bigger of a hole, but I've tried to keep it small just so that I don't have to worry about covering up too much and making sure that it gets hidden. So I'm going to get that one side and then I'm going to go back and get the other side and get those corners out. You need to get yourself something that's kind of dull, not a sharp pair of scissors, but something that you can turn this inside out with. Take your dull scissors or something that you can, your turning tool, and go into all of those corners, making sure that your flap. Oh, you want to get all of your corners out as much as you can so that it looks like that. The next thing that we're going to do is we're going to get a piece that is six and a quarter wide by eight and three quarters tall of Peltex. You do not have to do this step. You can skip it if you want. It's up to you. What I did was I folded it in half, stuck it inside, and then you just kind of have to straighten it out on the inside. Um, then what you would do is go around and top stitch. Now, a couple of things. She gets thick. <laughs> okay. So what I would do is take my key fob and then right here at these corners, just kind of press down. Just like that and just kind of press. These corners aren't so much a problem as the where the flap and everything meets. So you're going to want to an eighth of an inch all the way around top stitch if you want to. You can always leave it and go to the next step. So let's go top stitch this. All right, so I have my stitch length at a four. I also put in an 18 needle. I'm going to start kind of in the center side and then we're going to go all the way around. We're on our very last step. So I went ahead and grabbed my ID pouch. And we've got the panel all sewn around. Any raw edges or anything, you want to kind of tuck them in. Now this one is kind of hard to explain. <laughs> but we'll figure it out. All right. With your ID panel, like this, put it right side to right side of your... Um, card slots your bottom panel okay find the center you can lift this up kind of making sure that your center line of your ID pouch is on that center line that you made to um, turn this inside out we're gonna do that on both sides you're also gonna make sure that the pouch is in 
the center on the sides so that you can sew this closed. Now what we're going to do is we're going to sew down here about a quarter of an inch from our center seam here. We're going to sew a quarter of an inch over, down, back up again, and back over. I have got a four stitch length. I am going to start about a quarter of an inch in from my edge. Uh, I've got a four stitch length and I'm just going to go kind of slow making sure that I'm getting that quarter of an inch seam allowance. I'm going to stop about a quarter of an inch to the edge and then you're going to need to push everything out of the way from behind there. Go real slow. Put that needle down and up. Go real slow because she's thick. And then we're going to go back up, making sure that we've got that quarter of an inch between us and our needle. I'm going to stop and get my thread out of there. All right, if you've done it right, that hole that we made will be in the center and you won't see any of that raw edge. That was just a way for us to turn this thing inside out with, without struggling. <laughs> so go ahead and uh, get threads out, burn your threads, and then we'll finish up. All right, so we've got the majority of your wallet all sewn up, ready to go. You could stop right here. <laughs> it's up to you. But there are a lot of little pieces that are going to be flapping around when you're trying to open up your wallet. And so if you wanted to, we could add snaps. Um, you could add the snaps here and here so that these snap. Um, but I'm not going to do that. I'm going to show you how I put the cheese and the salsa card slots together. I'm going to have the centers clipped together and it's not quite as much flapping around. You do not have to do this. Alright, so we have got our little caps and I'm using plastic snaps you can get uh, matching snaps you can do all kinds of different things if you want to do fashion snaps I've got my mail in I will be posting the correct terminology for these um, the caps and the studs and all of that on the screen that is the female end you're also going to need your little clamp to do your snaps just smush them together and then you're going to need an awl or something to make a hole. First thing I'm going to do is I'm going to grab my salsa. I'm going to do it about a half inch from the edge and a half inch down, give or take. So I'm going to put my awl in there, slip a cap with the pokey side up. I got the terminology, can you tell? All right, so we're gonna push that down like that. I am gonna grab the male end, and then I'm gonna push it down on that little pokey thing. And then I'm gonna take my tool and I'm gonna put the cap in here. Hopefully you've been able to see what I'm doing. The cap is gonna, is gonna go in here, the male end is gonna go in here, and then I'm just gonna smush it together. Okay, so that's in place. Now, you're gonna to wanna to open up your zipper pouch and you're gonna put these two together. Then you're gonna take your finger and kind of feel where that cap. I used the male end so that I could feel it a little bit better through those materials. I'm gonna put these together and then with my finger just kind of feel where the male end is poking out at on the cheese. And I'm gonna take my awl and place it there. Then I'm gonna put a cap on the inside of the cheese lining like that and then I'm going to put my female end on this side and then again we're going to put the cap in there and we're going to squish just like that so you can put these together you can actually snap them and unsnap them a few times just to make sure that you've squashed your snaps good enough close this up and then whenever you open your wallet it won't be quite as flappy. If you wanted to, you could add a snap here and a snap here and have them meet. 
Um, it's up to you. I'm going to leave it like that because most of my customers tell me that they don't really use um, the snaps that much. So I'm, I'm not going to waste the effort of putting more in. It's up to you if that's something that you want to do. So she's all done. All right, guys. So what did you think? Hopefully this was easy. <laughs> I know it was a lot of pieces, but it it's not something that you guys have never done before. Hopefully, um, it's it was an interesting design trying to get that centerpiece because I was trying to get more card slots and an ID wallet in there. So hopefully, hopefully it worked out, and hopefully you guys liked it. If you did, make sure that you give this video a thumbs up. And if you are that percentage uh, that is not subscribed but watching the videos, I need you. <laughs> My goal was 10,000 this year, and I am so close. Can you guys please do me a favor and subscribe? If you have any questions or comments, leave them in the comment section down below. I do answer those daily. And thanks again for joining us on FaithWorks Designs. Bye, guys.